Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and today uh, our Ableton tutorial for the day is going to be on using the drum rack. I've never actually covered the basics of the drum rack utility before, and um, that's what we're going to get into today. So um, to start things off, let's just go to the drums window here and drag in the drum rack onto a free MIDI channel or just a free space on live. Let's just delete the audio channel and these two um, return channels just... Uh, to clean up some space in the window here. So the drum rack, as you can see, let me turn this down so we don't break your ears later, um, is essentially a plugin, a gigantic sampler plugin. So essentially when you hit a key on your keyboard or a MIDI key, it'll play the note corresponding to that um, key. So let's just say if I click, you can't really see it, if I click the D key here, it'll play the D key on the MIDI keyboard or the D um, the D flat or I can't really read it from here but you know what I mean. It's essentially if you don't understand what MIDI is please check out my video on the basics of MIDI and how all that uh, MIDI functionality works above me now um, and then come back to this video. But essentially, this is a MIDI controlled um, drum plugin or sampler plugin, essentially, that allows you to load samples onto any playable key on a MIDI device, like a keyboard, a um, drum pad, like a Launch Pad S, or um, even, you know, anything, a DJ controller or whatever. But to start things off, let's just go and grab some samples. Now, if you don't have any samples, you can download uh, sample libraries. There's a lot of good ones for free. Just search on Google, uh, free drum sample libraries. I personally really like the Black Octopus Levithian um, pack. It's one of my favorite packs of all time. Um, I use it on a lot of tracks these days. And um, you can purchase that uh, below. I'll put a link in the description. But essentially, the drum rack works by dragging um, samples. As you can see, this is a dot .wav file, um, and that means that it's a audio clip or sample, and we can drag that right onto any free space on this drum rack here. So if we hit play, it'll play that note. Easy enough, right? So if we drag in a clap or whatever, we can drag that clap in, or we can drag in a let's see a hi-hat and a open hat so essentially we've just loaded four samples that are playable by a MIDI keyboard or whatever we just plug this back in here it kinda came undone if I can get it to work okay so if we play where is that note here we go. I'm pressing notes on my keyboard and they are showing up uh, as playing in this sample rack here. It's essentially as easy as that. So if you want to write out a sequence of drums, all you have to do is double click in your timeline here and then you get a traditional piano roll like normal and um, what you do is you write out your drums the way you want them to sound in the song um, by double clicking in the spots. Um, if you don't know how to use the piano roll, I might do a tutorial on that in the future, but it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, we have the claps on every other beat and the kicks on every beat, and then we're going to put the hi-hats in between. And then we have a basic... Um, let me just do this. We have a basic house groove. So if we put open hat there... There we go, and that's a basic like kind of housey groove. Um, if we go back to here and we go to the macros, you can also assign macros to things to control um, the samples within the rack itself. Um, that it gets into the more advanced things where you're using, um, you know, effects per channel and effects that are controlling. Uh, different instruments within your drum rack so we're not going to get into the macros today um, the this button here allows you to view the um, 
parameters for each individual sound in your sample rack. So here's the kick, for example. If we want to throw it left, we can pan it hard left here or right. It's exactly the same as a track pan. Uh, we have the volume, of course, which is the same as a track volume. But instead of controlling the entire track, it's only controlling that individual sample. You can also disable the uh, monitor on it so that you can't hear it. You can also see that here. And you can also solo this one, so if it's playing in a sequence like this, it'll only play the soloed sample. There's also a function called Hot Swap that allows you to press this button here and then scroll through your samples and then press enter and it will swap uh, automatically. Um, this is helpful if you want to lay out your drums in a certain way and you don't know exactly what drum you want to use yet. Um, next thing we have is the I.O. Um, that's essentially if you want to map your audio to a specific other channel like a send return or a, another channel for whatever reason. Um, most people don't ever have to deal with that because sends and returns are already handled through the um, basic UI here but if you have any use for it you can in the future. Hold on a sec. You also have sends and returns as well down here assuming you want to use sends and returns. And um, that's essentially all there is to the drum rack. Um, as you can see here, when we click on a sample, um, it opens a sampler window here, so we can see everything we traditional, traditionally see in the instrument library um, sampler. So if I drop in a clip here, actually maybe it's not, it used to be. <laughs> so. Um, this is essentially just the, the sample uh, controller as you can see here. We have the um, slice keys and everything else. The only thing I ever really use in this entire window is the attack set which is here uh, where you can set where you want your sample to start. So if I hit the key here you can hear it as I move it. It changes the sound of the noise. And then you have the controls, which is like uh, if you want to add a envelope to it or a frequency modulation on that that certain sample, you can do that. But again, this is very similar to the sampler plugin, and um, this video is not dedicated to the sampler; it's dedicated to this drum rack right here. So, as a quick recap, um, you can drag in any sample onto these pads here, and they will become playable plugin or playable notes on your keyboard. You can also program them via MIDI here, and you can draw out sequences here. You can uh, modulate the track um, parameters like pan, volume, solo, or um, monitor on or off by clicking on this button here. You can assign macros to certain effects within the drum rack here, and you can also uh, solo, monitor, and play them individually here. One final thing to note is that if you see right here there is two different spaces you have an audio effects here and you have this space right after this um, if you want let's just say you have a snare and the snare needs a little bit of EQ cut at the low end right and, but you don't want that to affect the entire rack because you have a kick in there as well and the kick is very low heavy um, the way you can accomplish this is by dragging the EQ either directly onto the certain sound you want to affect or directly after this uh, sample here. It's kind of like a sub rack within the main rack. So if we drag it onto the clap per se, as you can see when we click on the clap, we can see the EQ fell right behind the sampler here and then there's this gap as we saw before and then there's that. So if we want to compress it we can drag the compressor in and that will only affect the clap. So as you can see if I click on another sample here they will disappear. Um, if I drag in, let's just say anything right now, flange and then I switch the clap as you can see it only affects that certain sample but if you want to affect everything in the entire rack you can drag them over here past the drum rack itself and this will affect everything in the chain so I hope this tutorial was helpful um, if it was give it a like if you didn't like it give it a dislike and let me know why you disliked it or liked it in the comments below uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel I do a video every Wednesday and Friday um, I do tutorials all the time and um, uh, your, your recommendations help me figure out videos for future episodes, so leave those below as well. 
So thank you for watching again. This is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.